Testing battery banks for the Nintendo Switch can be a tall task, especially since the two banks we're testing today are among the beefiest standalone battery banks I've ever owned. The biggest one being the RAV Power Extreme Series 26,800 milliamp hour bank, featuring three smart USB ports. The other being the RAV Power Extreme Series 20,800 milliamp hour bank, which features a USB C port, a standard smart USB port, and a supercharged USB port. Now, it took a long time to test these banks. In fact, since I wanted to run the test multiple times and compare it to several other battery banks in my possession, it took nearly two weeks to complete the testing. That is an insane amount of time. I literally spent large chunks of my day glancing at battery meters, hitting timers, and watching the batteries drain and or fill up, <laughs> depending on which bank I was using. Now, let's get into that testing methodology that I used with these banks as it pertains to just charging the Nintendo Switch. I decided when testing these banks to use them in what I would consider some real-world situations when you're on the go. Thus, I tested them with four distinct situations that I often find myself in with my Switch. Those situations being, how long could the Switch stay powered on with it plugged into the bank when the Switch was already at 100% while playing a game? And for testing purposes, the game that I played was Breath of the Wild. Then I looked at how long it takes to charge the system from 0% to 100% while the system is idle. And the reason it wasn't just when the system was turned completely off is that I couldn't accurately track the charge percentage when the system was off. So I had to keep it in idle, idle mode or, in other words, sleep mode. And then how long it takes to charge the system from 0% to 100% while playing a game. Again, Breath of the Wild. Lastly, I wanted to see how long it could keep the system on when the system itself starts at 0% while you're playing a game. I want to note that for each test, I use the exact same Nintendo branded USB-C charging cable that was rated for charging the Nintendo Switch specifically. This was to ensure accuracy with Nintendo's own available cords as third-party USB-C charging cables can provide unstable results. So let's get to the results. As you can see in the chart, there are some interesting takeaways. The 26,800 milliamp hour RAV power bank unsurprisingly held the system afloat the longest when starting at a 100% charge on the unit itself. Clearly, if you own this bank and you're going on a long flight or trip, this is the ideal method to keep your Nintendo Switch playing the longest though a 15-hour play session is pretty intense. Now, when I made an agreement with RAV Power to look at these power banks, which were advertised to me as having the Nintendo Switch in mind for their charging ability, I was told that the 20,800 milliamp hours bank's supercharge port could charge the Nintendo Switch while playing games, while the 26,800 milliamp hour could not. Obviously, these claims are not exactly true. Both the regular smart USB port and the supercharge port can both charge the Switch while playing games. But interestingly enough, neither port nor battery bank could get the Switch to 100% charge while playing Breath of the Wild before the banks ran out of juice. But the supercharge port did get the Switch to the higher battery percentage before tapping out. It got to 70%. The bigger bank charged at a slower pace and only hit 66% before bowing out. However, here is the interesting data point. Gameplay-wise, the 26,800 milliamp hour, despite charging the system slower, actually provided an extra two hours of gameplay, topping out at six and a half hours of gaming before the Switch unit died, compared to the supercharge port on the 20,800 milliamp hour power bank. Now on the surface, this may seem like a no-brainer, given the difference in the battery bank sizes. But given that the supercharge port was emphasized to me during the email exchange for this exact situation, 
Needless to say, it's a bit disappointing to see it fall this far behind, especially since it could not get the Switch to 100% charge. Seems like a bit of false advertising on their part, even if it did get the Switch to a 4% higher battery percentage overall. Does that really matter if the Switch still dies sooner than with the other power bank? They were also wrong in saying the banks could not charge the Switch using the normal smart ports, so there is a positive to them being wrong too. There is obviously a clear winner here, but pricing could always be a mitigating factor. We're talking about two massive battery banks, which do typically carry a massive price tag. In this case, both banks actually cost the exact same at $49.99 on Amazon. And what's even better about that price point is that if you click the links to each bank in the description below, you can use the promo code NathanDL to receive 20% off at checkout, giving you these banks for just $39.99. And interestingly enough, I think it's the first of our promo code that's had my name in it. Go figure. Now, in the world of power banks for the Switch, it's indeed notable that there are thousands of options. I myself have various different brands and sizes of power banks for my own personal use all around the house, from popular brands such as Anchor, which you can even find out at Walmart, to convenient wall plug-in versions, such as the ones by Pocket Juice. I've taken the ones I have, which range from 8,000 milliamp hours to 30,000 milliamp hours, and compare them directly to the RAV powers, and right now... RAV Power stands out as the most consistently reliable banks for the Nintendo Switch. The 15 hours of straight playtime is literally the best, even better than the 30,000 mAh versions, and the 3 hours standard charge time quite literally matches Nintendo's own wall output, with the 26,800 mAh RAV Power bank able to do that over again, up to 3 full charges, which is impressive. And it actually can almost hit that fourth that falls just short around the 80% mark. While I seriously question the claims of my RAV Power rep about their potential in-house testing with the Switch, real-world testing tells me that for just $49.99 or $39.99 with the promo code, the 26,800 mAh power bank truly comes out on top if I had to make a decision today for the best power bank for my Switch for the money. It may not be as convenient as other types of power banks that are built specifically for the Switch to connect to the Switch. There's even one that plugs right into the dock. But these power banks are bigger, last longer, charge faster, and they are multi-purpose in their functionality. But you could charge two Nintendo Switches at the same time. And you could do this with either RAV power bank, although it doesn't matter which bank you use, both banks will pretty much be dead by the time they get both units up to 100%. But the fact it can be used with any other USB charging electronic out there makes this, in my opinion, a no-brainer as a multi-purpose battery bank. I'd personally only be opting for the smaller battery size with the supercharge port if you plan to charge other devices of yours with it as there certainly was a huge charging difference for my iPhone 6S Plus using the supercharge port versus not. But when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, the difference in the one hour less charge time to me is not worth the trade-off for the less time playing games, especially when they are the exact same price. So what are you waiting for? If you are still looking for a power bank that is multi-purpose, but does work really, really well with your Nintendo Switch in a variety of situations, I highly suggest you pick up one of these RAV Power Banks in the description below. As always, I am Nathaniel Rufflejantz from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And I want to note that RAV Power did send me these power banks and yes, the Amazon links in the description below do give me a small percentage of your purchasing price. However, you don't have to use those links below and you don't have to buy these products. I am not putting this out there as a product advertisement. I am just giving my honest review of these products as they were sent to me 
Personally, I will be using the 26,800 milliamp hour RAV Power Extreme for all of my Nintendo Switch charging purposes, where I am going to turn the other one into mostly a tablet and phone charger that I might keep in my car since my charging port in my car does not presently work. As always, you do not need to purchase any products that you do not need, and I don't actually want you to purchase any products that you do need, but I obviously appreciate if you use our affiliate links because it does help support us here at Nintendo Prime. Anyways, folks, I will catch you in the next one.